Hey everyone, Professor Hank here. So today we're going to talk about how to generate random numbers in C++. So let's begin. In order to generate a random number in our C++ programs, we're going to need to use a function called rand. And the rand function is accessible through the cstidlib library. So we're going to need to hashtag include cstidlib. Found include cstidlib. Now once we do that, we can call the rand function. And the RAND function is going to return an integer when you call it, and that number can vary from system to system. But on any standard implementation, it's going to be some number from 0 to at least 32,767. All right, let's go ahead and call it five times, and we'll simply send the number it returns to the screen. So five times. Let's compile and run that, see what it looks like. All right, so you can see there's the five numbers that were generated. Now, there's a couple of issues that we have to be aware of. The first thing is you'll notice that if I run this program multiple times, the RAND function is going to generate the same numbers over and over again. So 41 is the first number. You can see 41 is the first number, right? We just keep on running it and we get the same numbers over and over again. 41 and then 18,467, 6,334 uh, and so on. This is because the RAND function can't really generate random numbers. There's an algorithm that it follows that kind of fakes it. And so RAND is actually a kind of pseudo random number generator. Computers can't really generate random numbers. They fake it. So by default, RAND is using a particular seed value that is the basis for the series of numbers that it can generate. If we want to be able to generate different numbers, we need to be able to change that seed value. And we'll do that by using a function named srand. The srand function takes as an argument an integer, and that integer determines the sequence of numbers that rand can pull from. So let's see an example of that. We'll call the srand function and pass it 99. When we compile and run this, you will see the series of numbers has changed. Okay? Okay, but this doesn't quite solve our problem because all we have done is we've changed the default seed value to something else. If we run the program over and over again with the new seed value, you're going to see that it generates the new set of numbers over and over again. So 361, 23,235, and so on. 361, 23,235, and so on. One solution to this problem is to use the system clock to generate a seed value so that each time we run the program, we'll get a new seed value. We can access the system time using the time function. Now time returns an integer representation of the current time on your computer, which we can pass as an argument. To access the time function, we have to include the ctime library, so we'll need to pound include ctime. Let's go ahead and see an example of this. So we'll call time and we'll pass it zero as an argument and use the value it returns as our seed. And we'll pass that value to srand. Now, if we compile and run our program a few times, you'll see that we're going to get a different set of values each time. There's one set, and there's a different set, and here's yet a different set. Now, what if we wanted to be able to use this pseudo random number generator to simulate rolling a die? To do this, we're going to use modulus. Let's say I wanted to generate a number one through six at random, like a rolling a six sided dice. What I would do is I would call the rand function and use modulus six. And remember that modulus is gonna give you the remainder of integer division. So when you divide any number by six, there's only six possible remainders. Zero, one, two, three, four, or five. That gets us close, but not all the way because we want to be able to generate a random number of one through six. So we'll add one to the result of the modulus division. So now you'll see when we compile and run this that we're gonna get a number of one through six. So let's change this to one plus rand modulus six. So let's compile and run that. You can see we got two. And if we run it again, three, if we run again, four, and so on. You can use this trick to generate any range of numbers you might want. For example, if you wanted to generate a range of 1 through 10, just do 1 plus rand modulus 10. Or if you wanted a random number between 1 and 100, then you could do 1 plus rand modulus 100. It's just that easy.
Okay, so now you know how to use the rand function, the ctime function, and the srand function to generate a range of random numbers for your C++ program. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.